going to do is we are going to look into the how amine is going to be formed. So to be exact, there are three methods of forming amine. You can actually have a look at the notes that I've given you. So one of the ways is going to be from amide to become amine. Okay, the only way that you can do is going to be by using a very strong reducing agent, which is going to be uh, LIALH4, okay, in dry ether. So the reaction one suggests region and condition. Okay, to suggest the region and condition, the region is going to be LIALH4. Okay, so the condition uh, in this case is going to be you can actually put in dry ether. Okay, in dry ether. And then I don't think so, there is a need to warm them. Okay, but uh, if you want to write down warm, it's okay. Okay, but uh, these two will do. Okay, reaction two. Okay, if for reaction two, how do we actually change halogen or alkane to become amine? Now, this one you need to be very careful because there are other, other reactions involving uh, that reaction, halogen or alkane. One is going to be if you are using KCN, okay, KCN in ethanol, then after that you reflux. Okay, you are going to get something that have additional number of carbon. So you can see here, okay, I do not need additional number of carbon. Why? Because carbon, carbon, carbon and carbon. There is no increase in number of carbon. If there is an increase in number of carbon, then you need to use this method. Okay, you need to actually add with KCN in ethanol, then reflux. After that, you are going to actually reduce them. There are three ways to reduce them. Okay, you can actually use LIALH4 in dry ether, or you can use hydrogen in nickel, or you can use sodium in ethanol. Okay, so all these are if you are going to add number of carbon, but same, it's also production of amine. So that is going to be something that is going to happen here yeah, if you have more number of carbon. But in this case, because there is no increase in number of carbon, so it is enough to just react with hot ethanolic ammonia. Okay, and then this one is not mentioned in the textbook, but it is mentioned in the marking key. So we will actually just learn and just put everything in together. So here, okay, the reaction two, it must be hot ethanolic ammonia. Okay, hot ethanolic ammonia and you just put under pressure. So it means extreme condition. So you want certain uh, condition which is going to be the halogen alkane must be reacting with ammonia under extreme condition. It must be hot. It must be also has high pressure. Then you are going to get a mine. Okay, so that is going to be the reaction. So the state, the type of reaction in reaction one and name the mechanism in reaction two. So the type of reaction, okay, so you can see here, amide to become amine, you are using reducing agent. The type of reaction is reduction. So you see the term that they are using, type of reaction, mechanism of the reaction. Mechanism is going to be different. From reaction two, okay, what kind of mechanism that we are talking about? Okay, this mechanism involving any reaction about halogen alkane and alcohol. Okay, please remember this: halogen alkane or alcohol will involve nucleophilic substitution. Okay, nucleophilic substitution. So nucleophilic substitution, they have SN1 and SN2. Okay, please go and read about this, SN1 and SN2. When do we use SN1 and SN2? Okay, what kind of method are we going to use carbocation or are we going to use transition or intermediate? Uh, intermediate? So to answer that, okay, there is a simple way to actually remember that. So do remember SN1, it's going to actually work for what kind of halogen alkane. So I remember tertiary halogen alkane, something opposite. If it is SN2, then it's going to be, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, primary halogen alkane. Okay, so I just remember in this case. So SN1 is going to be tertiary. SN2 is going to be uh, primary halogen alkane. 
So if you have tertiary halogenyl alkane, it means there is a formation of tertiary carbocation. So if you have tertiary carbocation, according to Markovnikov rule, if you have tertiary, tertiary is much more better. Okay, it's more stable. So tertiary, you are going to have SN1 is the formation of carbocation. So this one, SN2 is going to be, you do, uh, don't want primary carbocation because it's not stable. So it's going to be involving transition or intermediate. Then you can actually use this uh, information okay, to actually draw the mechanism of the reaction. So this is going to be roughly how you differentiate SN1 and SN2. Okay? So how to draw the using curly arrow diagram and so on. I've done another video on this. Okay, please go and have a look in the YouTube. I, ha I have uploaded okay, under SN1 and SN2. Okay, let's actually move on. Now, benzene, okay, they react with bromine in the presence of aluminium bromide catalyst. So basically, you see benzene, they react with bromine with the presence of halogen, uh, halogen carrier. Okay, if you have halogen carrier, so they are going to actually react uh, where they are going to be attached to the ring. Okay, so it's going to be what we call a substitution reaction, which we call it as a nucleophilic, uh, uh, nucleophilic, is it nucleophilic substitution or electrophilic substitution? Let me check. Okay, uh, Jody, benzene, will they actually undergo nucleophilic or will they undergo electrophilic? Electrophilic. Why, Jody? How to remember? Have double bond. No, don't actually think about double bond. Okay, the, uh, in benzene there is no double bond, so we always think that the benzene ring has a delocalized electron, so they always reach in uh, a lot of electron, so they are having high density of electron. So electrophile loves electrons, so they will go there. So it, that's why it's called electrophilic uh, substitution. Okay, is that clear, Jody? Yes, sir. Okay, please remember this. Uh, nucleophilic. Okay, when it comes to nucleophilic, please remember if you are talking about nucleophilic substitution, remember SN nucleophilic substitution. We just learned about this. Nucleophilic substitution is going to be for halogenyl alkane and alcohol. Okay, and then another one that we need to actually remember is going to be a nucleophilic addition. Nucleophilic addition is for carbonyl compounds. Okay, carbonyl compounds, aldehyde, okay, ketone. Uh, that's going to be nucleophilic addition. Okay, please revise more. Electrophilic addition, that's going to be double bond. So, Jody, the one that you mentioned about double bond, that's electrophilic addition. Okay, electrophilic addition. So this is electrophilic substitution, okay? Now explain why no addition takes place. Now to answer this, you need to actually answer in a proper way, okay? We need to actually tell, okay, if there is addition, then the product that they form is not stable, okay? Why? Because uh, when we say stable, we say that okay, the, when the electrons, okay, when they become delocalized, okay, when they become delocalized in the ring, then the entire molecule is going to be stable. Like for example, if I have a benzene, then I add Br over there. The electron from the Br will also enter the ring. Okay, they will be uh, going into the ring. And then those electron is going to become delocalized within the ring. So in this case, why this reaction happens because the, the structure that whereby the electron being delocalized is more stable. So you just need to actually explain the substitution okay, product is stabilized by the delocalization of the pi electron. Okay, the substituted, substituted product is stabilized. Okay because or by delocalization of six pi electrons or pi electrons will do okay so there is going to be or if you want to actually say if the let's say there is addition then the addition product is not stabilized by 
delocalized uh, de delocalization of pi electrons. You can refer to the marking key. Okay, but this one I want you to remember. Okay, why this is more stable? Because the substituted product is stabilized by the delocalization of the pi electrons. Okay, let's move on. Now, AlBr3 reacts with bromine to generate, uh, generate an electrophile. Draw the mechanism of the reaction between benzene and Br plus ions. So basically, this is going to be electrophile. So do not, uh, you do not need to write down okay, what is going to be the equation here, but I think they ask you to write the equation in the third part. Write an equation to show you how, okay, how AlBr3 catalyst is reformed. This is afterwards, okay? So if let's say they ask, okay, it's supposed to be AL, um, AL, okay, let me actually charge. Okay, it's supposed to be AlBr3, okay, when they react, okay, when they react with Br2, okay, this one, please remember how the reaction uh, actually takes place. There is going to be, can you guys hear me? Let me see who is not muted. Okay, it's okay, let's continue. Now you can see here, okay, you can see that AlBr3, okay, they are going to react with Br2, okay, because, okay, there is going to be uh, some sort of a, uh, you, uh, what they call, uh, they will, when this AlBr3 comes closer to Br2, the electron, okay, they are going to induce the electron to uh, go more to one side, okay, where, it's, where they are going to have heterolytic fission. This one you, uh, is not required for now, okay? Basically, it's supposed to be the, there will be heterolytic fission taking place. So you are going to get AlBr4 minus, okay, plus Br plus okay you are going to get this so this is the one that we have over here the electrophile if they ask you to write down that okay then you write down that equation so but now draw the mechanism of the reaction between benzene so i just draw benzene okay with br plus okay br plus what i draw is going to be the curly arrow diagram please see from where to where it's coming out Okay, so you are going to have, okay, something like this. Okay, this one from here to here plus, and then you have H, you have Br. H was already there in the, since the beginning. So now this is going to actually go and go inside here, okay, the electrons. Okay, so there is going to be another heterolytic fission is going to happen, whereby you are going to get this structure the B bromobenzene plus okay, H plus. Okay. So this H plus is the one that will be actually used over here, which is going to be the H plus okay, when you react with the here. Okay, when you react with AlBr4. Okay. So what happens is going to be uh, you are going to get Al. Br3 plus HBr. So you are going to get the catalyst being reformed. Okay, this is, uh, I think we already discussed so many times. Okay, you need to actually know about this. Okay, you must know about this. Okay, very, very important. Okay, let me share the screen again. Yeah, so it's not, okay, okay, it's appearing slowly, very slow. Okay, so let me actually uh, move on. Okay, suggest why okay, bromination of phenol occurs more readily than the bromination of benzene. So to suggest why, maybe Shane, can you actually tell us why bromination of phenol is more readily happen than bromination of benzene? Um, because lone pair of oxygen is still collapsed into the ring. Okay, so basically phenol, okay, phenol have this uh, OH, okay, the lone pair, okay, the lone pair of electron and, uh, of the oxygen, they will become delocalized into the ring or delocalized into the pi system, okay, so because of that, okay, you are going to have more uh, electron density, 
okay, there will be more electron density in the ring. So if there is going to be more electron density, so it is more available to be bond uh, for bonding with the electrophile. Okay, so that's going to be two marks. Okay, so if I see the marking key also, the what are the things you must mention is going to be the lone pair of oxygen is delocalized into the ring. Okay, so that is the the first mark that is uh, going to be given. But you need to actually explain one more. Okay, phenol now has higher electron density in the ring, available for bonding with uh, electrophile or something like that. Okay, they also mentioned phenol can polarize or induce a dipole in Br2. I don't think so. That is, uh, I don't teach you about that. So basically, the important thing that we need to think about is going to be, okay, when the lone pair become uh, delocalized into the ring, okay, now you are going to have more electron density. Okay, so if you have more electron density, so it is readily available to be bonding with uh, the or reacting with electrophile. Therefore, okay, because we are talking about bromination, we are talking about electrophilic substitution. So it is related to that. Okay, so two marks is done. Now, C, okay, this one I have discussed earlier sometime back. Okay, there are four different carbocations with the same formula C4H9. One structure is given in the table. So they are asking you, to draw the structural formula of three other carbocations. So do remember, they want you to write the structural formula. So the way that I wrote uh, written stuff over here, I think because I want to visualize, so I actually put it in form of displayed formula, okay? So, but this is not going to be accepted, okay? Because you want structural formula. So here, when I notice here, I notice that, okay, you have four carbon, okay? And then this carbon, there is positive over there. So if I draw, like it will look like CH2, and then this is positive. The rest, C3H, uh, C3H7. So I can see that, okay, this is going to be a primary carbocation. Okay, I can see it's going to be 1R primary carbocation. But can I actually come up with different kind of carbocation? So using the same method, okay, if I have C and H, Okay, C and H. If I can actually break that C3H7 into like C, CH3 go here, CH3 go there, this is going to be another carbocation, but again, it is still going to be a primary carbocation. Primary, this is also going to be a primary carbocation. Okay, one of another possibility. So, how do I write it down? Okay, I write down, okay, C. CH2 plus, okay, then CH, CH3, 2. So it means I write C, maybe H, then bracket CH3, 2. Should be okay like this, okay? So you are going to have something like this, okay? So this is going to be primary. So if let's say, uh, let's look at structure three, okay, what else can I form? Okay, maybe now instead of putting all the hydrogen there, maybe one of the hydrogen, I change it into CH3. Okay, I put CH3. Then I still maintain the hydrogen I put over here. So I need to have four carbon. So one carbon, one, one. So four carbon. So if I have this, okay, this is going to be, if I just simply look, this is going to be one R group, another R group. So it's a secondary carbocation. Okay, so how do I write down, okay, in form structure formula? So I will write down maybe uh, CH3, CH2, then this C is bonded to H and also CH3, okay, and then I put plus, maybe I can put the plus here, okay, this carbon. So this is going to be another one more. And then structure four, okay, instead of writing uh, one CH3, I write two CH3, okay, and then left with another CH3, so C9 already, uh, C3, uh, C4, okay, C4, H9, okay, so I have this plus, okay, so this one is going to be, if I look over there, it's going to be a tertiary carbocation, so if I just put down the structural formula, so it will be C, then bracket CH3, 
three and then positive here. Okay, these are the possible three carbocations that you will get. Okay, you need to write down in structural form. Okay, and then benzene reacts with each of these carbocations. Okay, in separate friedel crafts alkylation reaction. So basically, they are adding. Uh, do remember, carbocation is a positive. They want a uh, negative. Okay, so they are positive. So all these carbocations, they are electrophile. Okay, they are electrophile. So they are going to actually undergo this uh, friedel crafts alkylation. So basically, they this positive over here, all these positive, they are going to join with the benzene directly. Okay, so if you look over here in the text, uh, in the marking key, they have written uh, in form of this um, skeletal formula. Why? You must actually answer in form of skeletal formula because your first question, okay, they already mentioned in, uh, already given in this form. Okay, so since they have given in that form, you cannot just use any other forms like this page formula or something. So you need to try to follow the same. If you look over here, here you can see that C, 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 C. So it means there's four carbon. So if I see four carbon here, so I can see one, two, three, four. So it means this is going to be the, belongs to structure one. When structure one, the carbocation number one, when they react with benzene, okay, so you are going to get straight away this over here. So I need to come up okay, with the, the other three, okay, but the only thing that I am provided with is going to be number of peaks in carbon 13, which is eight, six, seven, and eight. How do I use this information okay, to actually identify what type, okay, what type I'm going to get? Like for example, here you can see if this is done, okay, so we left with these three, so if I have like, for example, a benzene, okay, a benzene, when I react with this uh, compound CH2+, plus, okay, so maybe CH2+, plus, okay, is bonded to one carbon. So it's, this carbon is bonded to another carbon, okay, go down. And then this carbon is bonded to two other carbon, okay, this carbon bonded to two other carbon. So how do I show that it is bonded to two other carbon? Maybe I show like this. Okay, so I can actually show like that. Or if you want, you can actually also show in this way. Okay, this is another way. So this is going to be when it's bonded with uh, carbocation number two. Okay, now what I notice is I need to relate to this uh, number of peaks. Okay, it means a, diff a different carbon environment. So if you look at the different carbon environment for this uh, structure that is gi uh, given over here, let's actually analyze, okay? Uh, this is one carbon environment. This is another carbon environment, another different carbon environment, another different carbon environment. This is another different carbon environment. But I just want to ask uh, Charlton, if this is one carbon environment six okay how about this carbon environment Charlton? that also another environment yeah uh no it's still six why i told uh i told you in order to understand this always think about symmetry okay so this carbon is bonded to carbon number five but this carbon also bonded to carbon number five and the rest is all the same you can see over there. So that is also six. If this is seven, this is also seven. The same concept, okay? So this is different. So it's going to be eight. So you can see eight. Can see Charlton? Yeah. Okay, let me actually complete all this first, then we will actually put uh, into there. So this is two, yeah? So let's actually look at uh, that is two. So let's look at structure three. Okay, if I have structure three, I will have a benzene. Uh, this benzene is bonded to one carbon and this carbon is connected to CH3. So maybe uh, connected to CH3 and then connected to another two more carbon. So connected to one carbon, another carbon. So I'll have something like this. This is going to be structure three. 
Now let's actually go to structure number four. Okay, structure number four. So if I have a benzene, and then I have the carbon, one carbon, bonded to one carbon, and then I'm going to actually bond it to CH3, CH3, CH3. So one, another one, another one, something like this. Okay. So this is going to be structure four. Now, what is important is to identify how many carbon environments so that I can actually put them where I want. Okay. So if you look over here, okay. Um, when I wanted to put them, okay, into, hold on, yeah. Okay, when I wanted to actually put them, okay, into this uh, different carbon environment, then I need to analyze first, okay. Let, let us actually analyze it properly, okay. So I'll use a blue, blue ink over here. Now, when I analyze for carbon number two, okay, uh, the uh, uh, structure two, yeah. So how many uh, possible carbon environment that I will have, okay? Please actually take note of this. This is one, okay? Now, is this carbon environment the same, Jody, Or is different, this one? Jody, The same one. The same, why? Because one, is bonded to this and this one is bonded to this and the rest are all the same so this is one also okay this is also one this is going to be a different carbon environment two this is going to be another different carbon environment three this is four now after that okay the best way to look at it is by making it as a symmetry okay if this is five Charlton, this is also? Five. Yes. If this is six, this is also six. And this is going to be seven. So seven carbon environment. So if I look at here, this is number two, yeah? If I look at seven carbon environment, this is going to be seven. So that is going to be the answer, the seven carbon environment, which is going to be two. So I draw this. Ken Jalton, this is done. Jalton, can you understand? Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's move on for this one. Okay, the one for three. Okay, you see, this one is going to be, this carbon environment is one. This is going to be a different carbon environment too. This is going to be another different carbon environment. This is going to be another different carbon environment. Another different carbon environment. Make it a symmetry. This is going to be carbon number six, seven, and eight. So structure number three will be for number peak of eight. So that's why you can see I have written number three over there. And then the last one, okay, the, the one that reacts with carbocation number four, okay, you see one, but you see, they are bonded with the same carbon. Carbon number one is bonded to this carbon. This is two, okay, this is two. One is bonded to two. This is also one, bonded to two. This is also one, bonded to two. This is going to be three. Make it symmetry, four, four, five, five, six. So there are total six different environment. So six, this is going to be automatically this one. And then you draw the skeletal formula properly. Okay, this is my explanation on this, okay, NMR, okay, number of peaks of carbon. So four marks. Okay, please take note. Okay, very important. Okay, if not, you will miss a lot of marks. Okay, let's actually move on, number six. But before that, okay, I'll stop for a while because this one is important. Any questions? Gabriela, Nicole, Victoria, Lawi? No, sir. Okay, Lawi, are you here? Yeah, any question? No, okay. Let's move on, yeah. 
So here, number six, okay, compare and explain the relative acidities of chloropropanoic acid, three chloropropanoic acid and propanoic acid. I think one of the common uh, thing that uh, when it comes to propanoic acid, three carbon, okay, three carbon, then propanoic acid. Now, do remember this is automatically carbon number one. So propanoic acid. If you have two chloropropanoic acid, if the chloro comes here, or if the chloro comes at three, so the chloro comes over here, three. Now, please take note, they want to talk about SCDT, ability to donate the electron. Now, do remember CL. Okay, let me ask um, Arneta. CL is electron withdrawing group or electron donating group? Electron withdrawing, she put in the chat, yeah? So it is electron withdrawing. So do remember, in order to for this H plus to go out, okay, we know that oxygen is going to be electronegative, okay? So this, uh, this electron over here, okay, they are going to actually uh, pull over here towards the oxygen. What happens? The bond between O and H is going to be weaker, okay? So because of the bond is weaker, Okay, the H can come out easily. But if you can actually make the H uh, or the bond to be more weaker, what we can do is by adding the uh, by adding the electron withdrawing group. Okay, so it depends on the position. If you add them closer, then the electron withdrawing ability will be more. If you are adding them further, then there is going to be less electron withdrawing effect. So in this case, if you just have chlor uh, propanoic acid without chlorine over there, then that's going to be, of course, it's going to be the least acidic. Okay, it's going to be least acidic. So the moment you actually put the Cl, okay, the moment you put the Cl, what we are going to have is going to be, you are going to have something like an electron being attracted, uh, withdrawn. So if the electron is being withdrawn, so we are going to actually have something, a situation where um the the anything that has the cl okay they are going to become more acidic okay they are going to become more acidic so the least acidic is going to be propanoic acid so let's actually compare two chloropropanoic acid and three chloropropanoic acid very important carbon number one carbon number two carbon number three two is closer Okay, if two is closer, better ability to withdraw the electron. So if two is going to be better ability, so this is going to be two chloropropanoic acid. And three chloropropanoic acid, sorry, most acidic, yes. Two chloropropanoic acid is most acidic. Three chloropropanoic acid is going to be somewhere in the middle. And then the least acidic is going to be the propanoic acid itself. Yeah. Now, uh, explanation, okay, please actually explain. Uh, we need to talk about the Cl, okay. Cl, you need to mention about electronegative, okay. They are electronegative. Because of that, okay, because of that, the OH bond will be weakened, okay. OH bond is going to be weakened. And then you can also explain to compare these two and three. Okay, the two is much more stronger because Cl atom is closer. So the OH bond is going to be more weakened. Okay, of course, they mentioned about stabilizing carboxylate as anion more. Okay, but I think the most easier to understand is more towards the weakening the uh, OH bond. Okay, so the please actually focus on that. Okay, so any of these two. Okay, so one mark you will get from, from this, a correct, uh, correct arrangement. Second is to talk about the Cl being electronegative, okay? So they are going to withdraw the electron, so it will weaken the OH bond more, okay? And then you need to compare two and three, okay? The one that is going to be closer, okay, will become better acidic. The one that is further is going to be uh, not so good acidic because they are not going to weaken the OH bond properly, okay? That's going to be the explanation. Now for this one, okay, of course, I, uh, some of you would have actually seen this question many times, okay? Similar questions to this. It's very popular, okay? They will give you two types of acid and then they will give you the Ka. 
Then they'll ask you, okay, they give you this mixture using this information, come up with the equilibrium constant, how to do that. The first way, uh, the first thing that you need to do is to uh, write down the equation. Like for this one, it's a methanoic acid. So write down, okay, this equation. This is going to be um, CH3CO, it's a carbonyl group with the uh, ethanoic acid. So I just put, okay, I write down first. Now, if I want to write Ka, imagine this is K1 and this is K2, K1 and K2. So if I write down, okay, the expression will look like something like this. And the expression for K2 will look like, uh, like that, okay. So if you have that expression, so let me see whether it's shown over there in the iPad. It's taking time to appear. Okay, let me... Okay, it's appearing over there. So you can see, okay, it, uh, you need to actually use the K1 and K2. So if I want to actually write down the Ka value for this, so what I did was I... Okay, let me screen share again. Okay, just wait for all. Okay, Arnetta was asking, sir, do we say delocalize into or overlap both also the same okay both also the same uh, so you can actually say the normally when we say uh, overlap uh aneta we normally say the overlap is actually related to orbitals overlap okay so orbitals overlap so whenever we are talking about lone pair of electrons i think we normally say delocalized so it depends on how you want to say okay so let me share the screen. I hope it answers uh, your question. So normally we will say delocalize into the pi system, the electrons. Now, if I write down, okay, the Ka, I, you can see this one, I take this one, I write down, okay, divided by this, I wrote down over here. So I need to actually use this information that I have, okay, and then I try to, uh, put in like for example I see uh, I have CH3CO uh, CO2H here so I can see it's a similar thing over here and then here is there so what I notice is okay for K2 no need to disturb just put the K2 okay no need to disturb but for K1 when I see for K1 uh, I can see there's HCO2 minus, okay, at the bottom, but here it is at the top. So it means that I need to flip this. Okay, I need to flip this. So when I flip, okay, I'm going to get the HCO2H on top and then HCO2 minus at the bottom. So the H and H over here, when I do this thing, H and H will cancel. So eventually I'm going to get this, okay? It means I came with this expression first, okay? K2 divided by K1, that's actually the K equilibrium, okay? So this is going to be the expression. Once I get that expression, so, uh, okay, so thank you. So de delocalize into the pi or overlap with the ring. So basically, this is, uh, Aneta, you say the lone pair of electron, they delocalize into the pi system. Okay, delocalize into the pi system. But if you want to mention overlap, you can say that the p orbital, normally uh, when we want to explain uh, related to overlap, the p orbital uh, overlap, okay, with the uh, uh, overlap with the 
P orbitals in the benzene ring, okay, or something like that. They actually mentioned use uh, use the term overlap like this. So just see, um, but normally if you want to actually mention about delocalization, talk about lone pair, yeah. But if it is overlap, we talk about orbitals, okay. So maybe later when you try some questions, you can actually see that uh, connection, yeah. So for this one, you just put put in the value, okay. I know the um, K2, K2 is going to be just take the entire value, but K1 is one over K1. Okay, so I just put over here 1.78. When I calculate, I get 22.9. So I just put 22.9 over there. Now, use your value in uh, K equilibrium. You see your K equilibrium is going to be more than one. If it is more than one, it's going to be the position is going to be more to the right. So it means we are going to compare K1. Okay, it's actually, if it is more than one, Okay, then it's going to the right. Okay, it means uh, top, okay, divided by bottom. The top is actually more, it means more product. So that's why you want this. If you have less than one, okay, then the equilibrium will be shifted to the left, okay, which is 0 0.9, 0 0.8, and so on. So for K1, can we say that it is a backward reaction? So the equation is uh, flipped. Yes. Okay, yes. Correct, Gabriela Nicol. So uh, that is actually the what is going to happen. So it means that uh, in order to achieve this equilibrium, okay, this equation they are going to actually flip. Okay, they are going to go backward reaction. So it means, uh, but uh, to show this in this expression, I think better if you visualize this way using your maths. Okay, that is a better way to visualize. Okay. So you use this, then all the calculation will be cancelled. So that's why you actually have this, okay? But anyway, it's one mark, okay? Now, so this one, okay, in this case, 22.9, okay, 22.9, more than one, okay? Therefore, the equilibrium lies to the right, okay? So you just need to mention that, okay, it's more than one. If you don't mention it's more than one, okay, you will not even get the one mark, even though this is correct, okay? So please remember, the explanation must be correct the equilibrium constant, okay, the KEQ, okay, will be more than one, okay, you need to mention. Now, ethane diary acid, this one we have uh, discussed earlier, yeah, so there is going to be two dissociation constant, it means that the H plus is being lost uh, twice, okay, so this one is going to be, uh, they are losing one H plus, you can see one H plus, Okay, then after that, another H plus is lost. So do remember the first one, when they lose the H plus, it's going to be easier, but the second one is going to be slightly difficult. So this is going to actually tell us why they have two dissociation constant. Okay, it means that if it is difficult, the H plus is less. Okay, if H plus is less, your pH okay, or pKa will be lower. So you can see the pKa, 1.23, Normally, 1.23 is, uh, uh, you just follow like pH. 1.23 is stronger acid, something like that. So it means that they have more H+. plus. Which one should have more H+, plus? this one should have more H+, plus, easier. Okay, so this one has less H+, plus, so it will follow the second one. So you can see pH, uh, pKa, 1.23, I took the first one equation and I write it over here. <coughs> 4.19. I took the second one and wrote it over here. This one we have discussed about this, yeah? If you have a situation where the dissociation can happen three times, then you will have three pKa for that, okay? So if let's say there's another CO2H, then you are going to have another pKa. So at the pKa, okay, the pKa will increase okay, every single time when you remove, yeah? Or the Ka, will decrease every single time you remove. Yeah, so do rem uh, remember that. Now, uh, state the mathematical relationship. This is very easy. PKA is negative log KA, okay? We have done this as well. Maybe I'll go very, very fast on this, okay? Uh, you are going to have these three things, okay? Methanoic acid, okay, this uh, structure. So I've written this structure in this way. And then you have the ethane dioic acid, okay? over there. So they are asking you, okay, they have given you some observation. So which one will be suitable? So you can see methanoic acid has a positive reaction. The rest don't have. So do remember, 
okay the positive reaction is happening okay because methanoic acid if you want to oxidize methanoic acid you can even oxidize with any oxidizing agent okay it's very very easy to be oxidized to be exact here i written tolan uh, tolan and warm and then i also put failing and warm okay you can also use kmno4 also okay doesn't matter okay doesn't matter okay but kmno4 what happens if you're using kmno4 ethane diuric acid is going to give you positive reaction so kmno4 no okay cannot cannot kmno4 so only the tolan tolan or failing okay so the observe uh, what is going to be our observed change okay Okay, sorry guys. Okay, let me actually share the screen again. Okay, the connection is quite weak. Lavi, can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. I cannot hear you clearly also. Okay, but anyway, so I'm going to end, but let me actually finish this, okay? So here, okay, can be oxidized. So you see, if you are using tolan, okay, if you are using tolan, you are going to get the silver mirror observation. If you are using failing, okay, uh, failing, you are going to get brick red precipitate. So failing, okay, do remember we are using the copper two plus ions, okay, in ammonia solution. So this one is ammonia, uh, ammonia with excess ammonia silver solution as well, tolan. So please remember that. If you are going to use this one, okay, this is going to be basically to identify these structures, CH3, C double. Sorry, guys, I got disconnected. It's okay. Okay, uh, I think we'll continue tomorrow. Okay, uh, I'll just go very fast on the that part and then we'll go on. Yeah, so um, is it okay, Shane? Can you hear me?